All right, uh, hello again, uh, to all, avoid any confusions. Um, I want to clarify uh, why I'm standing here again. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on stage again. Um, and after I was representing uh, IHA this morning, I am now here as a founder and CEO of Hemp International from Germany. And I'm going to show you the latest update on the hemp food market in Europe and Canada, as far as we have those numbers available. <laughs> the main statement is um, very positive, and it's the same statement that I was um, happy to give in the last years. The turnover with hemp foodstuff and corresponding raw material is increasing strongly worldwide. Hemp seeds, wool hemp nuts, hemp oil, and hemp protein powder are becoming more presentable in retail as well as in the food industry. The status in the EU is well, next to the fact that it's pretty complicated to get all the data together, but um, Meanwhile, we have some sources to get the data, or we are already collecting it for a couple of years, of course, together with the association. And uh, it is very interesting to see that the ratio between bird feed or general feed and food is changing. As you can see in the numbers there, since 2012, we have a ratio that is in favor of the seeds that are used for food, for human food. And uh, as I said before this morning, we have also uh, the largest area since what, 50 or 60 years, depending on how you uh, count exactly, um, with the 20,000 hectares of hemp grown in Europe in 2015. You can see here, the raising acreage or the raising number of hectares that we are doing in Europe um, split in the different main countries, France, Germany, and then the others. But I will give you more precise data very soon. But first of all, I want to show you um, the numbers that um, come from this hectare, from this from this number of hectares or from this acreage, let's talk about acreage, uh, which is the more <coughs> common English word for it. Um, the numbers are uh, the quantity of seeds that are coming from this uh, <coughs> acreage, and also the number of seeds that we are still importing. And as a food producer in Europe, I have to admit, and I'm also not ashamed of that, that we have, do actually import uh, large volume of hemp seeds from China um, as it took us a couple of years, 10, 12 years ago to uh, find reliable sources uh, for the conventional but as well as for the organic um, food quality seeds. But the sources are there for sure and um, always keep in mind that China or Asia is the, the birthplace um, for cannabis. Uh, for the hemp plant. So while we had our struggles here in the last or a couple of years ago for the couple of decades that there was no hemp legally grown in Europe except for France um, and also there was no hemp legally grown in North America for quite a while, uh, the Chinese never stopped uh, growing and farming hemp and they have a huge potential of uh, know-how, quality, uh, fantastic varieties, very, very uh, uh, good quality varieties for food applications. So um, when you look at those numbers, you can see that we have um, a stronger production, a larger production now in Europe itself. Um, we are also importing, um, not pretty much the same still, but the ratio between food and feed is changing. Um, which also puts a little bit pressure on the quality, uh, sorry, on the pricing. The quality 
for feed was always the same. It's pretty easy to uh, uh, handle that. And while we, while in the first years, of eight, ten years ago, it was still possible to pick good or better feed, feed batches and actually analyze uh, all the data that you need for, for food quality and uh, you could say, okay, well, this batch is actually so good, it doesn't have to be sold as feed, you can sell it or use it as food quality. Um, this has changed because now uh, the demand is so high, um, actually any batch is already checked in China for the quality and if it's food quality, then the price is automatically higher and it will be kept in separate storage and under good storage conditions. And best uh, possibility is uh, having a cooling warehouse and the cooling container on, on, the, on the way uh, of transport and so on. Um, so pricing has become an issue and I will get back to that later on. Um, now I will show you I will show you the current numbers. But uh, as it is with all the hemp data and all those hemp numbers, every day we learn more. Uh, the numbers that you see here are pretty good, reliable estimates of this year's um, hemp growing area in Europe. But as we learned this morning from the Ministry of Agriculture in Slovenia, we have a lot more hectares in uh, Slovenia because Slovenia would be here below uh, under the point others and there's only 228 hectares that um, we got reported as an association and um, so we of course only can work with the numbers that we get uh, presented or that we get uh, informed about um, <clears throat> the good news is if we if we see this uh, uh, this fact that Slovenia actually has 500 hectares this year plus minus and we also know about other countries that have maybe some more hemp farming going on than they actually know about or already reported, the number, uh, the total number of 20,000 hectares will definitely over, be over exceeded, uh, which is a very good news. Now, we're getting back to the pricing issue. As you can see, um, I myself producing with the uh, hemp seeds since 2000. 2003, the prices were pretty stable between 2003 and 2008 for the first five years. Uh, and as I said, <clears throat> normally were not differentiated for the imports from China, whether it's food or feed. The Chinese didn't know at that point of time that we have different measures to clarify or to determine the quality. They shipped what they had, and we decided in Europe whether we can accept it as food or we had to decline it or have it uh, ready for feed customers. Now, first of all, the demand is increasing every year. Uh, the um, growing um, growing area uh, for hemp, um, the acres, is not keeping up with, the, with this kind of demand. And um, on the other side also, uh, because of uh, the reliability to have food quality, all this together leads to very strong increase in prices based now in this case on FCA Rotterdam, same same as X work, uh, cleaned with a purity of 99.5% so that you can actually use this kind of product right away for the oil press or for the holding machine. Um, what what does that mean? Actually, this is a Wonderful news. Of course, nobody wants to pay more for a product, but uh, of course, on the other side, the product is always worth what it is worth. And uh, hemp seeds, or all the products that you can produce from hemp seeds, are definitely worth the money. So we should not look on the single cent or on the 20, 50 cents that the oil or the cost more, or the full hemp seeds package cost more. We should be happy that these prices are up there because what it, what it means for us in Europe. It's worth to grow hemp. In the 10 years ago, it wasn't worth in Europe to grow hemp because China just imported all their seeds over to Europe. And for the pricing that they could offer to the food market, even if it was maybe fee quality before and just good enough for the food market, a European farmer can grow hemp. 
especially if there is no equipment for that. Now, with price levels above 2,000 euros per ton for organic food quality, that is definitely possible. Leave alone CBD, leave alone any further application. You don't even have to use the shrimp sheaves, shives, herds, whatever. If you sell seeds, let's say 700 to 1,000 kilos per hectare for 2,200 to 2,400 euros per ton, you are set. The farming will work out. So actually, I, I kind of like those curves. Um, here's a little overview on Canada. There's a little harvesting going on in Canada. Actually, it's the largest harvesting or the largest uh, area for food quality worldwide. That is going to uh, that is growing there every year and harvested every year. And uh, together with the map of Canada, with the most of the uh, states with the largest hemp agriculture area, you can see tremendous numbers uh, of what the Canadians have achieved in the last years. Uh, if you look at the estimates of 2015, we are talking about 50,000 hectares. That's uh, two and a half times of what we're doing in Europe right now, which is nice because it shows us we're on the right way and uh, we can always learn a lot from Canada and they always learn a lot from us. So um, it shows the upward trend worldwide. You see these uh, wonderful, this wonderful graphic and uh, me as a, as a learned banker, uh, I would love to have this, this kind of chart for every, every, any number, any sales, any profit. This is just a perfect chart. And this is about the cultivation area of hemp in Canada. Now, um, an interesting comparison you can uh, see here. We talked about feed and food already. Um, I always like to point out that the complete Canadian acreage, not 95, I think even 98%, is grown for seed. Well, maybe there, is, there are some fiber applications coming in, as Andrea uh, Herman uh, told us before. There is, yeah, the, that's what they're learning from Europe, because we are a lot stronger on the fiber market. But there is basically no feed market in Canada or North America. There is so much nature, there are so many, so, so large forests and parks. They, don't, they are not used to feed the birds in the garden, as we do that in Europe. They, they don't even understand the whole system of uh, the whole concept of it. So while it is absolutely normal in Europe to buy uh, bird feed packages and you have always, almost always hemp seeds in there, or you have 100% hemp seeds, bird feed packaging, and you have the fish feed market and some other feed market, this kind of market is not developed yet in Canada. So when you look at the, uh, the chart and at the colors, you will see that the darker green quality is only for human consumption grown in Canada for the North American market and some exports, of course. Um, while other way around, the darker blue is Europe for the feed market. And the nice, very nice scenario now in the last three years is that the light blue is getting bigger and bigger. The total number of seeds consumed or produce are uh, growing in Europe, but also we are, the food market is taking away quantity from the feed market. So oh, thinking back, this has also, of course, influence on the price. Uh, for one, two, three years, it might work, but now, of course, we already have already um, inquiries from the feed market because they are missing some volume. They are missing a couple of trucks, a couple of container ships of hemp seeds being ready for the market. And uh, uh, the, the price issue will keep on going for the next two or three years until farming has uh, taken, has stepped in and they are growing more seeds over in China. Also, of course, the growth in Canada will keep on going. And, which is good for us in Europe, our seeds that we are producing here will not be sitting on the shelves, they will be used. Uh, we had the problem before, long time before, that there were too many seeds on the market, nobody could use them, etc. 
and they, they didn't find any buyers. But now the problem is different, the, the, the market is different. There is the demand and the supply comes now afterwards. And there will be somebody who, who is buying the seeds, as long as they are either the beef feed quality or the food quality. So summarize, you will see this here. The demand is high. Uh, turnovers are higher and higher every year. There are very good future perspectives for our EU market. Uh, it is a standard uh, to have hemp products in the supermarkets in North America, as well as in the Great Britain, meanwhile. And on mainland Europe, this is, is starting also right now. Uh, one of my most, uh, one of my dearest uh, quotes is from Michael Carlos, CEO of um, EAHA. Um, if only 10% of the population in Germany would integrate 10 minutes of hemp oil in their daily nutrition, the yearly requirement of approximately 30 million liters of hemp oil of 100,000 metric tons of hemp seed would be allowed. So always take those numbers and then you know what, what capacity that market has. We are, not, we are not even close to what the market for hemp products will offer as the for business. Uh, well, everybody of you knows Google, and when you check their search trends, you will find that uh, hemp in combination with the category foods and drinks has a strong increase in the last years. So uh, this was just a little gimmick to the side. And uh, the future prospects summarized here again uh, are very positive for all kinds of hemp food products in the supermarkets or um, in the retail, uh, retail, uh, retail market. Now I give you some more charts as a couple of gimmicks here. You can, when you, um, there's an international database for all universities. And in this database, uh, any kind of publication, scientific publication, public publication is uh, registered uh, when it's made public. Uh, so we're not talking about some kind of goofy uh, uh, data here that somebody comes up with because he heard that or read that number. This is official university data. Peer review. <laughs> Peer review. That's important. Peer okay. review data. Very good. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see here, probably from there, the easiest, um, the easiest number you can see, or the easiest chart you can see is the black one with the dots. That is the relative research interest smoothed over the years. So it's kind of the, the smooth curve. And this is what uh, comes up when you type in hemp. This is hemp seed. Hemp oil, fatty acids. We had that topic this morning already. Here are hemp varieties, so there is a, a lot of interest on hemp varieties worldwide. Uh, here you can see that the smooth curve on THC is going a little bit down, but that is just mathematically. You, know, you can still see that the charts are up there for um, the research. And last but not least, this is the curve on CBD. So, um, well, thank you all for your attention. I hope this gave you a little overview on um, hemp food worldwide. And um, you can, uh, yeah, you can have some questions now. And I have yes. one more surprise coming up. Thank you very much, Daniel. Your lectures were are excellent like all the time thank you hey, uh, audience some questions all the applause this means that you tell everything so questions